today, I'm going to share maybe three different things about these readings. The first one is we get to learn what that original church looked like, this community of believers. And it said they were of one heart and one mind. That's a beautiful thing to think about with your friends, with your class, with your family. Are you of one heart or one mind? Let's say a sports team. Are you all going towards the same goal? You know, one time I, I wasn't very good at basketball. I get, I bet some of you guys are much better than me, but um, I actually ran the wrong way and scored my only basket ever in middle school on my own basket. So I actually, from 6th, 7th, and 8th, I have a negative 2 record. There's not many people who can beat that. So I've never actually scored a basket while on a team that actually was for my own team. So I'm not that very good at it. But imagine playing basketball or soccer and imagine if half of you are going one way and half of you are going the other way. Do you see how you wouldn't really be able to win your game very well, right? It'd be very confusing. So when it says the community of believers was of one mind and heart, it's because every single one of them was first focused on Jesus. When Jesus was their first thought, their first love, their first everything, and when they were all moving in that same way, it was like a really amazing team going all towards the goal. They're much more stronger that way. And when they had Jesus first, they started to realize that all the things that they had in life were because of Jesus' gift. And they started not to cling to things and say, this is mine, this is mine, go find your own thing. But they were like, all of this is a gift. How can I be a gift to someone else? And so it says that they, they had everything in common. They made sure that everyone, especially those maybe who didn't have a lot to begin with, they made sure that if they had some more, they took care of that person. So it says that there was no needy person among them. Imagine if we did this. Imagine if we looked out for one another and always made sure that every single person had what they needed. But that only comes by focusing on God first. If we try to focus on ourselves and say, well, I'm going to be really, really a nice person by helping this person, then that's when we get into competition and we get into all sorts of different things. And ultimately, that helpfulness will break down. We always need to go to Jesus first. And then when we love Jesus first before anything else, Jesus more important than our family, than our friends, than anything, then we actually learn how to love our family, our friends, and others more deeply. And selfishness goes away. So that's one thing to think about. And we have this man, this man, this is another Joseph. He's called Barnabas. He's a saint. He was someone who was a Levite, which means that he was part of the people from all the way back in Moses' time who were in charge of taking care of the temple and the Ark of the Covenant. But he took some of his own property and he said, I'm putting Jesus first, so I'm going to take what's mine. I'm going to give it away and make sure other people have what they need. And his name is Son of Encouragement, which is what we should do. He was someone that always looked for, how do I say a kind word to someone? How do I encourage someone? And you know, he would actually be the one, when people were afraid of someone named Saul of Tarsus, he was the first person to go over to this man who would become St. Paul and say, Come, I see good in you, and I want to be your friend. And we know the rest of the story. 
St. Paul was welcomed in, and he wrote most of the New Testament. So that's the first thing. The second thing is this beautiful image of the wind blows where it wills. You can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know from where it comes or from where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. So has anyone ever seen the Holy Spirit? A lot of times we think of, you know, just a little bird kind of coming, and that's the way in the Bible that we need something to help us. But the Holy Spirit is, is not, a, not a bird with wings. He'll reveal himself like that sometimes, but there's not a holy bird that lives in heaven. He's God. He's a divine person. And the way that we see him is not so much with our eyes, but we feel his presence working in this world. I want to give you an example. So see these flower petals. Do you see the wind around you? Do you see the wind within me? No, but what if I go like this? <sighs> Do you see? You didn't see the wind, but you saw what the wind did, right? When you're outside and see the see the, the leaves fly around, you can't see the wind. It's not green, it's not yellow, it's not brown, it's invisible see it move things. And the Lord wants to move your heart so that people can see the Holy Spirit working within you. You know, someone said that Mary was so full of grace, full of the Holy Spirit, that when people met Mary, it was kind of like they were meeting the power of the Holy Spirit because they saw the Holy Spirit work within her. Have you ever been around someone who just loved Jesus so much? And you could just feel their love of Jesus. You could feel that there's something really, really, really special. Maybe it's your, your, your grandmother or grandfather. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's your mom or dad. Maybe it's an older brother or sister. Maybe it's a younger brother or sister. Maybe it's your teacher. And you just, it's like you can't see God right there, but you can feel that he's working. And sometimes it catches in you when you see someone who's just so joyful and so loves the Lord, there's something that happens in you. It's like, well, I want to love the Lord. When you see someone pray and they just love the Lord, it's like, well, I want to do that. That's the Holy Spirit touching your heart, moving within you and blowing the petals around. And when you say yes to the Holy Spirit, when you are born of the Spirit, then other people start to see what you saw in that person that was filled with the Holy Spirit. And do you see how that goes all the way out? And that's how this first community, how they loved, how they took care of one another, and people on the outside were like, wow, no one else is doing this. See how they love one another. I want to be a part of this too. So do you see how you can become a missionary by loving God first, being filled with this Holy Spirit, and allowing Him to share His love through you? That's what it means of being witnesses. So let's ask the Lord for that grace to be around people who are filled with the Holy Spirit. Think about who do you hang out with? Who do you look up to? Are they people that love God? And not just say they love God, but really love God with their actions. Hang around those people. Because the more you hang around those people that are filled with God's love, the more that you look up to those that are, that are filled with the Holy Spirit, then you too are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you're going to be like holy dominoes. Not dominoes pizza, but have you ever played dominoes? You put them up like that, one of them starts to fall, and 
And that's what happens. The Holy Spirit spreads to your whole class, to your whole family, to your whole town. <laughs>